There's a plethora of amazing, unique roller coasters out there, but not all coaster concepts get off the ground. In fact, there are many insane coaster ideas that never actually got made. So as voted on by the viewers, here are the top 10 craziest roller coasters never built. Number 10, Togo Superman Coaster at Six Flags Fiesta Texas. One of the top tier coasters at Six Flags Fiesta Texas is Superman Krypton Coaster. This floorless roller coaster was created by Swiss manufacturer BNM. Its inventive layout uses the surrounding limestone rock quarry to its advantage, with several segments built directly on top of it. Such a creation is a perfect fit in this park, but believe it or not, this coaster was almost built as something else entirely. It turns out that Japanese manufacturer Togo once pitched a unique looping coaster to fill Superman's spot. This was revealed when Togo's conceptual model was inexplicably listed on eBay. According to the seller, the model was found at a local flea market and was extremely detailed, though its current whereabouts are unknown. The model's layout is quite surreal, featuring what looks like a tower of interwoven helixes. It also contains a vertical loop and an underwater tunnel. While only one photo exists of this model, a Steam user named Kyle BNJMN Ross recreated the proposed ride in the game Planet Coaster. With a little bit of terrain work, you can see for yourself what this coaster would have ridden like. And to be honest, it looks pretty amazing. Its unique layout uses the quarry to its advantage. As of right now, this model is available for download on the Steam Workshop, so if you're a fan of Planet Coaster, you can find a link in the description. Number 9, the Free Flight X model, made by American manufacturer SNS Sansei. In 2009, American manufacturer SNS Sansei installed Tranan at Sweden's Skara Summerland. This model is known as a free fly and is by far one of the most unusual family coasters on the market. This ride seats passengers in swinging ride vehicles on each side of the track. Though the layout technically features inversions, the swinging trains keep passengers from going upside down. The coaster was critically acclaimed by the industry and would receive the award for best new ride at the 2009 IAPA Expo. However, its low capacity allegedly hampered its appeal in the coaster market. SNS, however, was determined to build on this model and would eventually create the Free Fly X concept. Shown only at the 2013 IAPA Expo, this coaster turns the original family-friendly concept into something much more thrilling. The conceptual animation featured floorless seats on the trains and had a much higher capacity than the standard Freefly. Its vehicles would allow for a much more intense ride experience, and SNS hoped to make an impact in the thrill ride market. Unfortunately, despite the initial splash it made in the industry, it never really caught on, and would soon fade into relative obscurity. However, in 2019, the company would build a spiritual successor to the Freefly X with the Axis Coaster. This model forgoes the wing-style seating in favor of seats that sit directly above the track. Upon its announcement, this model instantly went viral in the coaster community and was arguably the most talked about roller coaster concept in years. Don't be surprised if you see one of these bad boys open up in the near future. Number 8. The Swine at England's South End Pier For almost 200 years, the South End Pier in Essex, England has been the longest pleasure pier in the world. The pier itself contains a pedestrian walkway, a shuttle train, and a small amusement park named Adventure Island at the base. At one point, though, there were plans for an even bigger entertainment center to be built on it. First conceived in the 1990s, this proposed project named Atlantis City was the brainchild of businessman Tony Garner. Garner's company Epic World Leisure sought over $50 million for the project, which would consist of various new attractions. These attractions included a shopping center, a movie theater, an observation tower, and a massive roller coaster built entirely over water. This thalassophobic coaster would have some truly impressive stats. It would be 246 feet tall, with a top speed of 83 miles per hour and an absolutely wicked 9 inversions. This would have given it more upside down moments than any other roller coaster on Earth. While it did sound awesome on paper, Garner was unable to find the necessary funding for the project, and despite numerous attempts to revive the concept, it never got off the ground and into the water. Fortunately though, after years of seemingly being lost to time, the conceptual video was found by researcher Nick Skinner, who was kind enough to provide it for this channel. If you want to check out his website, I've put a link in the description as well. Number 7, the Sky Surfer model, made by American manufacturer Aerodynamics. Imagine taking a flying coaster and putting a 
another train on top of the track, you'd get this truly bizarre concept by aerodynamics. Up until recently, only patents existed of this creation. However, just a few weeks ago, YouTube user Aero Enlightenment Leader posted high quality footage of the concept from a vintage promotional CD-ROM. This disc came with a press kit, and it was meant to showcase the many innovative concepts Aerodynamics had in the pipeline. These concepts included the following, a diving inverted coaster named the Aerobatic, a Virginia Reel spinning coaster concept, and an extraordinarily bizarre attraction named the Extreme Zone, which by the way is probably the most early 2000s name you can think of. This concept consisted of a large circular structure with a swinging flat ride in the center, and a roller coaster concept named the Sky Surfer encircling the circumference. This coaster consists of one passenger ride vehicles on a double-sided track. The top of the track would have a rider in a face-down bodyboarding position, while the bottom of the track would seat the rider in a face-down flying prone position. The layout would be a circular downward helix with bank sections and inversions scattered throughout. Despite the epic scale of this concept though, Aerodynamics would go into bankruptcy around the same time this promotional CD came out. Since then, the Sky Surfer has faded into obscurity, but with SNS Sansei acquiring several of Aero's assets, perhaps they have this project waiting in the wings. Number 6. The Wooden Invert Model, made by American manufacturer Gordon Rides. Initially, this spot was reserved for the conceptual Star Wars coaster, though while a patent was filed for that ride, it was not in fact filed by Walt Disney Imagineering as I first thought. Instead, it was filed by a company named Gordon Rides, and it was more of an example of what their proposed warring coaster could do. I'll save the warring coaster for a future video, because this company came up with another coaster model that I just had to include here, the Wooden Inverted Coaster. Though I didn't feature it in my initial fan poll, viewers like Coaster Chicken 24, Matthew Wagner, and Let's Split Up Gang 1969 have all given suggestions on where to place it. So based on everyone's suggestions, I'd say the number 6 spot is still a good location for it. Moving on, the wooden inverted coaster would sit passengers under a wooden track, and would surround them with wooden support structures as they navigated the course. A leg guard would be used to protect riders from hitting their feet on the supports, though it would supposedly feature lap bars instead of over-the-shoulder restraints. Another thing worth noting is that this concept was allegedly incapable of inversions, which would have been a pretty hard thing to do here. The patent describes the coaster as providing, quote, a distinctive, rough, noisy, out-of-control feeling of freedom, which are enjoyed by many roller coaster enthusiasts. Whether the natural rumble of a wooden coaster would translate well to an invert is unknown, but this was no doubt an extremely creative innovation. Unfortunately for Gordon Rides, the failure of their Mega World flat ride at Brooklyn's Coney Island would end up bankrupting the company. The ride was a financial disaster, which was made even worse when damage from Hurricane Sandy made it extremely difficult to relocate. Hopefully another company will come in to revive these concepts. Number 5. The 400 plus foot terror coaster at Germany's Heidi Park. As of right now, the tallest roller coaster with a lift hill is Fury 325 at North Carolina's Carowinds. This is by far one of the most intimidating and impressive coasters in the world, but believe it or not, its record could have been broken over a decade before it was built. In 2001, Germany's Heidi Park was planning a brand new roller coaster for the 2003 season. It would be built by Swiss manufacturer Intamin, who was fresh off the success of Millennium Force at Ohio Cedar Point. According to early estimates, the proposed attraction would stand at an enormous 410 feet tall, which would have made it the tallest full circuit roller coaster on Earth. Besides the first drop, it would feature a relatively low to the ground layout focused on speed, with a few airtime moments thrown in as well. It was pretty much the German equivalent of Millennium Force, it would be located right next to Colossus, another Intamin coaster. Unfortunately, the project would run into several obstacles during its development. First off, the park was unable to get a permit to build the coaster in the spot they had in mind. Heidi Park had to move the proposed construction site near their bobsled coaster, Bobon. However, alleged height limits in the new location would force the park to scale the project down from 410 feet to around 335 feet. This still would have made it the world's tallest full circuit coaster, but the opening of Top Thrill Dragster in 2003 would put that record out of reach for the park, which made them less enthusiastic to build it. The project would be constantly delayed over the years, as park officials were hesitant to spend so much money on a single roller coaster. Major investments like Colossus were not boosting attendance as expected, and the park sought to focus more on families and save the money for other attractions. 
By the late 2000s, the project seemingly vanished into thin air. Though other thrilling coasters like Flug de Demonen and Kraken would be built, the status of the proposed Giga Coaster is still unknown. Number 4. The Figure 8 Loop Coaster Model Made by German designer George Putz In the 70s and 80s, ride designer Anton Schwarzkopf's portable coasters were all the rage. These included looping coasters like Testtrecke and the world-famous Olympia Looping. These coasters would be transported from fair to fair, bringing grade A thrills to hometowns across Germany. However, Schwarzkopf wasn't the only ambitious German designer for his time. In 1985, another German designer named George Putz filed a patent for perhaps the most insane roller coaster element that never came into fruition. This element, known as a figure 8, is exactly what it sounds like, a twisting inversion in the shape of its titular number. Unlike standard vertical loops, the track does not cross over at any point, instead taking a squiggly shaped pathway from a bird's eye view. Besides what's in the patent, the exact details behind this coaster are mostly unknown. All we do know is is that a miniature model of this ride once existed and was shown off at German manufacturer Zero's booth at the annual IAPA Expo. Only one photo of this model exists, but just one is better than none, and we're very lucky to have this design documented. Number 3. The Gyro Coaster Made by American engineering firm AKA Engineering Ever seen one of those human gyrosphere rides? Well imagine combining it with a roller coaster. In 2009, American engineering firm AKA Engineering revealed an un named roller coaster concept known by many as the Gyro Coaster. This company had been mostly known for its aerospace and government contracts, and this would be their first major step into the amusement industry. SNS Sansei was set to manufacture this coaster, and it is without question one of the most bizarre roller coaster concepts ever conceived. Passengers would sit in ring-shaped ride cars, each seating two people. The vehicles were capable of three rotational axes, allowing guests to flip, rotate, and spin in every conceivable direction. The track would have been a grand-scale design, capable of vertical drops and inversions. All the while, guests would be hurled through controlled rotations as if they were in a washing machine in space. The trains were also used in the drop tower concept, something that truly would have been a sight to see. Patents for the components were filed in 2009, and SNS would discuss the concept in 2010. However, not much was heard after that. A video of the concept does still exist on AKA Engineering's YouTube page, but the company hasn't posted anything new in over a decade. If we do see this coaster concept again though, perhaps it will be of a Sonic the Hedgehog ring-themed ride. That would be pretty amazing. Number 2. The Polar Coaster Made by American designer U.S. Thrill Rides In 2013, U.S. Thrill Rides, along with American manufacturer SNS Sansei, announced a $500 million concept that seemed too good to be true. This entertainment complex known as a Polar Coaster would feature a shopping center, a sports bar, an arcade, and a massive observation tower. This tower would be the complex's centerpiece, with an enormous roller coaster swirling around it. The coaster itself would be a variation of SNS's famous El Loco model, and would stand at an extravagant 500 feet tall. It was set to break the record for the world's tallest roller coaster. Its downward spiraling layout would include several insane inversions, and the design itself looked like something straight out of No Limits. Add in a drop tower that ascended the massive structure, and you've got a world-class attraction in the making. Several of these polar coasters were planned all across the U.S., with locations planned in Orlando, Florida, Atlantic City, New Jersey, Emerson, Georgia, and Las Vegas, Nevada. Unfortunately, getting such a project off the ground wouldn't be so easy. Over the years, each conceived polar coaster would run into planning issues and opposition. Perhaps most famously was the Universal Studios Resort sending lobbyists to oppose the Orlando location. They argued it would ruin the immersion and skyline in their parks, especially in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. Imagine trying to immerse yourself in the Wizarding World when all of a sudden you see this giant tower with a giant roller coaster around it. Doesn't exactly seem like something from the books. Somewhere along development, SNS Sansei would exit the project and would be replaced by Intamin as the manufacturer. Not too long afterwards, investors allegedly soured on the project, and no updates have been provided in over a year. It's unknown if we'll ever see this concept come back to life, but hopefully we can experience it one day, because let's be honest, this looks epic. 
Number 1. The Fish Hook Coaster at Las Vegas, Nevada Stratosphere From personal experience, I can safely say the Stratosphere is the most awe-inspiring and dreamlike entertainment complex I've ever experienced. Three jaw-dropping flat rides sit at around a thousand feet in the air, each one serving as an endurance test for those afraid of heights. At one point, there also existed a small roller coaster named the High Roller. This relatively tame attraction took guests around the top of the observation deck at a pretty slow speed. At one point though, something much bigger, faster, and crazier was planned for this complex. In the year 2000, Stratosphere officials, along with Aerodynamics, were in talks to build an incredible record-breaking attraction on the tower. Their proposal included the following, a 740-foot tall fish hook-shaped shuttle coaster that plummeted riders down the side of the building. Passengers would be sent downwards at a mind-blowing 122 miles per hour, crossing Las Vegas Boulevard and ascending a beyond vertical spike to burn off momentum. A large concept model showed exactly how the attraction Action would look, and thrill seekers were on the edge of their seats to see it built. But soon the project would be in jeopardy. Since the coaster came close to ground level, residents were concerned about the ride's potential noise level. They argued that the screaming would disturb homeowners and lower the value of nearby properties. Arrow would try to amend these concerns by proposing enclosed ride vehicles to muffle passengers' screams. This seemed like a promising idea, but the project would come to a grinding halt when Arrow filed for bankruptcy in the early 2000s. Though Stratosphere officials wanted to move forward with the project, the opposition was louder than ever. In their minds, why should they trust a project where the manufacturer went bankrupt? It wouldn't be long before this project was chucked into the could've happened bin, and the Stratosphere would instead build two new thrill rides, X-Scream and Insanity. Both of these rides are absolutely terrifying, forcing you to look down off the edge of the building at around a thousand feet in the air. And to be honest, the building looks a lot better without a giant roller coaster going off of it. Nevertheless, this still would have been an awesome creation for thrill seekers. Before I wrap this video up, here's a quick shout out to my newest gold tier Patreon supporter, Sam Freeman. Thank you all so much, and if you want to support me on Patreon, you can do so once again at the link in the description. Thanks for watching everyone, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. You can follow me on social media on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, or you can check out my website at themeparkcrazy.com. This is Theme Park Crazy, and I'll see you all next time.